Thanks for coming to our talk. My name is Xin Yuhua. I'm a PhD student at Northeastern University working with Lu Wang, and this is the work we study argument mining tools on understanding peer reviews. This is a joint work with my colleague Mikko and Nikio and my professor Lu Wang. So for starters, I'd like to show a recent trend in some of the major machine learning and NLP conference, which I think you probably already know. The number of submissions for the major conference, such as NERPS, ACL, EMNLP, and NACL, has gone up for more than 80% in the past year. As a result, the amount of work required for the reviewer has also grown dramatically. So we want to ask, how could NLP help? It turns out that in our community, there is indeed a growing interest in understanding the peer reviews. Here I, we outline some recent work on this topic. The first work is actually presented as a poster yesterday by Irina, and uh, they study how, what type of author response would likely to increase your review score in the rebuttal phase. The second work here study the relevance of the review to the editor. And the last work here is, last, is presented in last year's NACO, where they study how to predict the acceptance decision from the review text. However, we think that the, um, the work on directly marrying review quality based on the content is rare, and this is, aim, this is a gap we aim to fill. Specifically, in this work, we look at reviews from an argument, argumentative perspective. Here is a review snippet taken from Open Review, which is a popular online review platform. We can see that the review starts with a summary of the paper. It continues with some subjective judgment of the assessment of the paper based on the reviewer's own opinion. And finally, it offers some constructive recommendations and suggestions to make a better submission. Previous work on argument mining research has looked at arguments from three different levels. The most basic task is to identify the argumentative components from the freeform text, such as in this case, the claim and premise from student assets. On top of that, the arguments are categorized into different types based on the data and task at hand. For example, here the arguments, they use the schema of six major types based on the function the arguments try to convey. On the highest level, the arguments are structured into some sort of graph representation to reveal the supporting and attacking relation between arguments. Well, since peer review is a relatively new domain for argument study, in this work, our goal is to apply the existing models to understand the review quality. As an initial step, we analyze the review com components. In the future, we also hope to investigate the structural information from the reviews. So now let's, please let me introduce what are the component types that we define in this work. The principle of our argument schema is to be able to uh, classify the arguments by their functions and subjectivity. And therefore, we come up with these five major argumentative types. An argument of type evaluations is a subjective and opinionated judgment, such as this paper is novel and interesting. The reviewer also provides requests, which are suggestions and recommendations with a course of action to be taken, such as to compare with more baselines. A third type is defined as fact, which are objective information that can be found in the paper, such as uh, the, the type of work the, paper, the author proposed in the paper. And lastly, we consider two other objective types. Reference are citations and URL links to some external resource, and quote are the direct quotation from the paper. So these two types can also be used to prove the point of the reviewer. With this argument schema, we conduct some annotation study, where we collect 400 reviews randomly sampled from iClear 2018. This is uh, publicly available through the Open Review API. The, some basic statistics of this data set is listed here. We can see that an average uh, review has about 500 words, spanning 20 sentences, so it's pretty long, actually. Here we call this newly collected data MPEAR, which is short for argument mining for peer reviews. The annotation task is structured into two subtasks. We first ask the annotators to segment reviews into some propositions each of which is then labeled with one of the aforementioned argumentative types or as non-arg if it is not argumentative. A sample review is shown here. 
is first talk about the proposed method and then how the, how, how the reviewer feels about it. And finally, some suggestions. So the annotators will first segment them into some propositions. Notice that here, one sentence can be broken down into multiple propositions. And based on which the annotator will assign a label for each of the proposition. The annotation results are shown in this table. We can see that the most popular three types are evaluation, request, and fact, which in total accounts for more than 90% of, of all the propositions. In this task, we achieve reasonably good inter-annotator agreement score of 0 0.6 for both Krippendorf's alpha and Cohen's kappa. We divide this data set into 320 reviews for training and 80 reviews for test. Because we know that this data set is pretty small, so we use a five-fold cross-validation on the training set for hyperparameter tuning. Similar to the annotation, we consider two tasks here. The first is a BIO tagging task. In order to segment the review text into propositions, we consider two models. One is a CRF model with hand-crafted features. A second model is a neural network-based model enhanced with the ELMO embedding. For the second task, we could consider two different paradigms. Either we treat it as a sentence classification, classification task or also a sequence tagging task. For the first paradigm, we use a feature-based SVM model as well as a convolutional neural network classifier. For the second paradigm, similarly, we consider a CRF model or a BioSTM CRF model with ELMO. But we slightly modify the labels for BIO tagging, such as B for fact, I for fact, etc. The results on segmentation is listed here. The baseline method here is a, a full sentence baseline where we stop at the stop of the sentence and we treat each sentence as a proposition. And we can see that it has a okay precision, but uh, overall it's worse than a neural network based model. However, we do see a slightly gap between this and uh, some similar task on a different tech journal on student essay, which is arguably an easier task for them because the schema they have is for claim and premise, and ours is more complicated, which results in very complicated sentence segmentations. For classification, we'll consider two baselines. The first is we always predict the majority case in a training set, which is evaluation. In the second case, we handcraft a set of lexicons for each of the type and we use pattern matching as rules. Here we see the learning based met method all outperform all those baselines. Also we highlight that the best model is achieved by the neural network based model which jointly predicts the segmentation and the classification. With these models we think it would be interesting to apply to some larger data set. So we collect more data from open review which includes the iClear 17, 18, and UAI. Notice that the iClear data is already publicly available online, whereas the UAI data we thank to the OpenReview team who was generous enough to provide us with the data. We also con in addition, we also considered the ACL 17 review collect from a previous work, and around 9,000 review from the NERPS website. The first question here we want to ask is, which venue or conference has more arguments than the others, or is there a difference? In this figure, we show average number of arguments per review break down into the conference menu, such as iClear, UAI, and ACL, as well as the ratings. We see that ACL reviews definitely have more arguments. In fact, it is actually more longer. It contains more words than the machine learning counterparts. On the same figure, we want to ask, when do the reviewers decide to say more? And uh, non surprisingly, for the borderline reviews, usually it has more arguments. Since ACL reviews are longer, we, we want to ask do we prefer a certain argument type for ACL reviews? Here we show the percentage of the review composition for different venues. And we see that ACL reviews tend to ask more uh, requests and has less factual description compared with the machine learning conference. Finally, we would, like, we would be curious to know what kind of content reviewers are talking about for those types. Are they different in the co communities? To do this, we utilize the log likelihood ratio test on unigram term occurrence. This test essentially gives us the salient words for a given document compared with the background corpus. For all the conference, we see that the typical evaluation argument look like this. The experiments section was unclear. The contribution of the proposed method is limited. 
the results seem unconvincing. For the request, we say that it usually starts with please and the user word should ask for some actions. On ACL reviews, we say written, strengths, and weakness are popular words. So maybe we care more about how well the paper is written, actually. And uh, for the request type, we say words such as consider and examples. Here we also, can see, we can also compare the iClear frequent words with ACL, and we see that it's obvious that in this machine learning community, they tend to mention more technical terms, such as the network or how the model is trained. Also, interestingly, in the request type, they mention about appendix and recommend more than ACL. To conclude, we study peer reviews from an argument mining angle. We collect and annotate a new data set, MPAIR, for NLP research. And we benchmark a state-of-the-art method on a larger data set to study the content and argument usage across venues and ratings. In the future, we would like to extend our framework with structural analysis on arguments. We also hope to collaborate more with the open review team to improve the way we collect the data, to facilitate more comprehensive examination of the reviews. And finally, with our fundings, we aim to develop tools and interface to improve the review quality and also makes the life of the reviewers easier. Thanks. stand on my toes. Hi, Claire Cardi from Cornell. Um, nice talk and nice work. I just have a clarification question. Yes. Um, in the uh, analysis slides, um, you were talking about arguments in most of the slides, and I didn't know what you're counting as an argument. So if you go back, you'll say the iClear has more arguments than uh, reviews than uh, ACL reviews. Um, wh what are you counting there? So, uh, so here our two tasks are proposition segmentation and proposition classification. And we sort of interchangeably use the word proposition with arguments. So the arguments are actually the um, argumentative component units that we define okay. as a standalone arguments that, pers that try to convey certain um, discourse communication goals. Okay, and so it's a function of potentially of the length of the review uh, yes, it is a function of so basically the intensity, no, the density of the uh, propositional arguments here might not be similar, but ACL is longer and also has more arguments. Okay. That's the thing. Thanks. Hi, Joel Teacher from Grammarly. A uh, quick question, what was driving the, I think the agreement rate between the human annotators was 0.61. Can you uh, expound on like, well, where were the differences? Where was the confusion? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Actually, we see a lot of uh, ambiguous cases where, for example, how do you judge if something is subjective or not? Especially in, in some of the attack we see in a review, they tend to be polite. So they say we're like, it seems incorrect. So do we say that it is objective or not? Uh, also, sometimes in scientific research, they use words such as significant to mean something that has a meaning, like a mathematically well-defined form. Um, but some people might think significant is just a, evalu no, it's just a subjective evaluation. But we, we, some, we somehow have some guideline for this after several rounds of annotation. And I think uh, it used to be worse than this, but we, we make it better by discussing some of these cases. Right. Thank you. All right, let's thank the speaker once again.